Let's look at some general rules for basic input processing. In most scenarios, you'll write a managed bean for each form in your application. However, in some cases, any one managed bean may contain fields for multiple but related forms uh, related in the organization and purpose of your particular application. In general, and especially when you're first learning, um, you should associate all input fields of a JSF form with the properties from the same managed bean. You should also associate the action event handler of the submit button to a method from the same bean, a business method from the same bean, commonly referred to as the event handler method in this uh, structure. This is the easiest way to get user input. It also uh, works very nicely, as we saw, within the JSF framework. After the form is submitted, the system itself stores any user input with the bean properties and then calls the action event handler. All you have to do in your uh, rendering is access the bean properties for user input. However, and there's always the however, in some cases, a form can be bound to multiple managed beans. For example, you may want to centralize event processing functions in a separate managed bean from the input data holder beans. This is a very common organizational structure. From the event handler method, however, you don't want to manage separate bean instances in the Java code. What you want to be able to do is look up the other data holder beans by their bean reference name. So, for example, in your event handler, assuming this is something other than user, okay, we're writing our event handler method, we're working with multiple beans, um, we're writing event handler method, say, in uh, our greeting bean or our address bean, and we want to also uh, get a handle or get a, a pointer to the bean instance for user. So there's some steps that we go through in the event handler method to make sure we're getting our pointers in the right place. Um, from the faces context object, we ask for current instance by using the get current instance method. From that context, we ask for the application by calling get application. Uh, from the application object, we call a method called get variable resolver. And variable resolver returns an instance of type variable resolver. And uh, the resolve variable method on variable resolver um, allows us to get our, our pointers from something other than user. We're actually looking within the application context for a bean instance that has that bean name as we saw in faces config. So after these four lines of code, I would be able to work with that user object or user bean object or whatever it is that you're casting it to. In this sample, we're calling it a uh, user. I can work with that variable u to set properties, override properties, call any of the uh, methods on the user instance, but it's tied to the same instance, bean instance, that the rest of the JSF implementation is looking for. What is the JSF expression language? And we've already seen an example of this for using value and binding and, and the syntax. We've already seen examples of that syntax. So what is it? It's a basic language that allows us to dynamically control the appearance and behavior of certain components. It's interpreted by the JSF language compiler. Many attributes of JSF GUI components accept a JSF expression as a legal value for the attribute values. For example, here we have a JSF command button value logout. We're using the rendered attribute, and we're using a bean instance called user. We're asking for a property called logged in, 
and assuming that the logged in property returns a Boolean value, the rendered attribute is looking for a Boolean value, true or false, uh, whether or not to render this button. So if the user is um, logged in, in other words, if this is um, true, um, then the button for log out would render. If logged in returns false, then the rendered attribute is going to hide the button log out. Makes perfect sense. But what we're using here is a property, a Boolean property, and we're, and, uh, we're using the JSF expression with the pound sign and the curly brackets um, as the value for that particular attribute. So what are the basics of the JSF language? An expression is embedded, as we've seen, in between a pound curly bracket and a curly bracket enclosure. There are two possible modes in which an expression can be evaluated. There's read mode, where the expression is evaluated to a value, and then the value is used for some purpose, in other words, to render it. And then, of course, there's write mode. The expression evaluates to a managed beans property and saves some kind of data derived from elsewhere in that property, meaning that uh, setters need to be called. For example, we see here on input text, we're setting the value of the uh, input field to some value that's stored elsewhere, in this case in a bean instance called address and a property called first name. When the text box is rendered, the system actually evaluates this expression in read mode, and the result of the evaluation can be used to pre-fill the text box. When the form is submitted, in the update model phase, then the system is going to evaluate the expression to determine what the managed bean instance is and the property name and saves the input data in that property on that bean instance. The expression language in JSF, expressions are widely used as the value attribute for GUI component tags as we've seen. For any GUI component that allows user input, the value expression is evaluated in read and write mode. For other components, the value expression is executed in read mode only. For example, command button, as we saw, output text. Those are examples of read mode only. Many other attributes accept expressions, mostly in read mode only. For example, first, last, and row classes attributes of a, a JSF element called data table. The basic syntax is, as we've seen with the curly brackets and inside of the curly brackets preceded by the pound sign, the object name or the instance name. The system looks for the object, unless we explicitly define it, it looks for the object by that name in the following scopes in order. First request scope, session scope, then application scope. So for example, again, our same input text value, the system is going to look in read mode. It looks for first name or first name object by that name in the list that we see previously. In write mode, the system saves the object in request scope as a request parameter. As we've seen in the expression language, accessing properties is generally done with the dot notation. So the syntax looks like object name, dot, and the property name. First, the object has to be found in one of the available scopes request, first request, session, then application. If it doesn't find the object, the system considers the bean name as the name of a managed bean, and it will look up the class name from faces config. If it finds it, it creates a new instance. 
then the system can access the property by its name, that part which is uh, in our syntax example um, referenced by the dot notation. In read mode, the getter is called, and in write mode, the setter is called. So that's why we see um, getters and setters in these managed bean instances following traditional Java bean practices. If you're accessing a map using the expression language, the syntax generally looks like object name, dot, and the key value. After the system looks up the object by its name, the system determines if the property implements the map um, from Java, java.util.map. If it is a map, then the property name is treated as a key within that map. In read mode, the system calls the get method of the map object to get the value. And in write mode, it calls the put method of the uh, map class, using the object as a key value and looking for uh, the value that's uh, being copied from the request parameter. It is possible, although your own project discipline and format may determine that this is uh, not really easily readable, it's possible to create quite complex access expressions. For example, a chained property access syntax where you have the object name dot property one dot property two. Uh, where you're chaining these together. The system first accesses property one of the object. This property is obviously another object instance. And then the system accesses property two property of the second bean in this syntax. You can see um, where this might get a little difficult to read uh, very quickly. You can also mix constants with expressions. This is very common and very uh, easy to do and difficult to troubleshoot. Um, but uh, I'll put text in this example. The, notice the value is a combination of actually a literal string, thank you, space, and embedded in that value is the expression um, customer dot first name in JSF expression. And it's perfectly acceptable. If you want to specify the location of your bean instance, there are some predefined objects that you can reliably expect to be there. There's a couple of specifically scoped objects um, that you don't have to instantiate in JSF, and you can expect that they're going to be there. Uh, there's re request scope, which is a map of all the uh, request attributes. There's session scope, which is a map of session scoped attributes. Param is a map of all single valued URL parameters. There's also a param values um, object, which is a, a map full of the, all of the string objects that represent multi-valued URL parameters. So if I want to be specific about an object and location of an object, I can use these objects by their names in my JSF expression language. For example, here, again, using output text, the value is you have entered. And I've qualified in the expression instead of using first name I'm actually using the param object, param.firstName, which is going to look um, in the request scope for a URL parameter. And finally, in looking at the JSF expression language, there are a few basic, simple operators that can help you in the execution of uh, basic business logic. Generally, you should try to avoid using them. You should uh, put any sort of business logic in getter methods in the managed bean, even for simple arithmetic uh, operations, because these arithmetic operators are often used as syntax characters in the JSP expression language and the JSF expression language and a lot of them. But they are there. OK? You have your standard arithmetic operators, plus, minus, asterisk, percent. Um, you have relational operators greater than, less than, greater than, equal to, pretty standard. Uh, exclamation point equals and equal equal um, are your 
not equal to and test for equality relational operators. You have logical operators for testing and, or, and exclusive or. And you have a ternary operator um, where you can s specify a condition, question mark, expression, colon, expression two. So if the condition is true, execute expression one. Otherwise, execute expression two using that short hand syntax, which I believe is uh, introduced in Java 5, and it's just been extended to JSF. Uniquely to JSF, there is an empty operator, in other words, an empty expression. It is unique to JSF. It returns true if the ev expression evaluates to null, or a map collection or array with no elements, or a string of zero length. So you do also have an empty expression um, that will return true if any of these conditions is true. Little unique to JSF. So let's go take a look at Eclipse at how to create a more robust JSF application that incorporates some of these features of uh, JSF in the JSF expression language using multiple managed beans, um, handling our scope, the scope of these beans to do our little sanity check, make sure we can test this out and it works. Okay, so let's um, expand on what we've learned about JSF and managed beans and build a little more uh, robustness into our application in our JSF application working with managed beans. We're going to work with an existing uh, JSF project, very simple JSF project that already has one managed bean. If I open uh, faces config, in this hello JSF. If I open it up, I can see in the XML source that I've got a managed bean tagged with the name address. Um, I've got a very simple managed bean class called address. Um, it's got a number of properties, one, two, three, four, five, six properties, and six pairs of getters and setters, which are as uh, expected, and one business method that does something very simple, which is print out to the system. So we're going to build some more robustness into this. Notice that my event handler method returns the value success. I also have in my faces config file a navigation rule mapped to that tag, if you will, that, that string. Uh, success to render a, another JSP, okay? I have an action handler method defined in my from action to, or uh, sorry, from action from outcome, which is in my return statement, and uh, to view ID, I actually have a thanks um, JSP. So I want to add a little functionality to this, make it a little more intuitive, uh, organize it a little better. But first, let's uh, check that it's working the way we expect. I've got an input uh, form, right? That's the one I'm going to test as my uh, gathering user data form. Um, all one bean called address, which is how it's defined in faces config. And that's what I want to test. I just want to, before I start making any changes, that's what I want to make sure that's working as designed so far. But my goal is to add a little more functionality, maybe multiple managed beans, um, maybe uh, some, some input from the user. Notice we've got first name, last name, city, but our bean is actually capable of handling um, zip, okay, um, and street. Maybe I want that in the logic of my event handler, you know, um, whatever it is that I need to do. But first I want to test this particular uh, transition from input form to the thanks JSP, make sure my navigation rule is working, my manage bean element is working. So I can right click, actually no, on my server first before I do that, I want to take off another application and republish the Hello JSF application. So on my server, I'm going to right click, choose add remove, uh, so that I don't have such a cluttered test environment. Um, 
Yes, sometimes you have dependencies between these applications and you want to load multiples, but I want to uh, create not just a faster publish and test environment, but I want to focus my troubleshooting efforts. I know you guys are not going to make any mistakes ever, but sometimes I do, and I like to focus on uh, what it is I'm developing right now. So right-click on the JSP now, run as, run on server, and I see I mean, uh, see the build of my Hello JSF project in JBoss. I also see an undeploy, an undeploy build on my JBoss because it's undeploying the application that I removed. Server is starting up. And so we should expect to see, because this import Form JSP is in fact the one that um, we asked to run. We should see it rendered in a browser, and I do. And notice we're only collecting first name, last name, city, and we've got our button for add address, which should call our um, bean event handler method. So uh, first name, we'll use uh, Scott, last name, Smith, city, uh, London, right? and click address because we're just testing. Click uh, add address. And I was transferred over to thanks JSP. And my thanks JSP uh, very simply renders from the system using the same bean name, in this case address, um, asking for the first name field, the last name, or the first name property and the last name property, and then some text added in there as well. So this is working as designed. That's what's to be expected. And in the uh, server console, we see our system out statement that was um, called from or executed from our address bean code uh, city is get city. Notice get city, we're calling the getter on the address bean um, city field. Um, and writing it out. So our Java Bean is according to the Java Bean design pattern. Uh, that works very nicely. We declared our Bean in faces config. But let's make a simple change. Let's start with a simple change. What I want to do is I want to, and I'm going to close um, everything except faces config. And I'm going to change uh, the behavior of my manage beam without touching, see no hands on the mouse or the keyboard. I'm not going to touch the actual Java source code. I want to supply a default property for city. Okay, so I can use the user intuitive editor for this manage beam. Or I could use the XML source if I remember what the tag name is. You remember? No, I don't remember. I don't care. Um, in the initialization section in this editor, the reason I don't care is because I have a tool to do it for me. In this initialization editor, highlight on this address bean, I can add an initialization of a property. And notice that the tool is picking up what my properties are. So I want to put a default value of city or I want to assign a default value for city, and I want the value to be Paris. OK. And remember that this is writing out the, these uh, intuitive editors are actually writing to XML source. So if I go back to the XML source, I can see that, yes, it put in the managed property element the property name, the property class. I could override it if I wanted to, but that was actually part of the editor um, that there's a class um, here. OK? So that works nice. How does that run? Well, I don't even have to redeploy the application, although it will redeploy because I changed faces config. Uh, run as from the Project Explorer view. One little change to faces config, run on server, the application is redeployed, it should be reloaded, and we should see the city field populated with a default value, and et voila, it is.
That's pretty cool. That's a nice change, putting in default values uh, using the managed property tags. Now I want to do a little more reorganization of my code. Um, it doesn't make sense to have um, – well, it does make sense, and uh, and obviously it works. But it's not best practices to have your business logic along with your um, property logic, uh, the setters and getters for the property. Or uh, maybe you want, for organization purposes, you want uh, one managed bean to have all of the action event handlers and you want another managed bean to actually store data to encapsulate data objects. So we're going to create another bean to store the user information and then streamline this address bean down to only one method, event handler. Okay, or the our event handler in this case is called add new address. So um, we really don't want to write any Java code here. Uh, what we want to do is copy and paste um, the code in and then look at it. Um, so I've got the address bean code already um, trimmed down. Okay, so I can copy it and replace uh, the entire piece of code. Now we start getting some compile errors, especially. Um, user bean cannot be resolved and it is not a type. Yes, I know, because I haven't created the user bean object itself. But everything else seems to work fine because my import statements are there. Got a little warning that uh, variable resolver is deprecated and I want to maybe want to look at an alternative. But so far, there's no alternative to what it is that we want to do with variable resolver, which is be able to work with instances of beans without creating new instances of beans. We want the same instance that's tied to the data input. Okay, so what I want to do is copy in uh, the user bean, and I can do that by um, dragging it from Windows and dropping it into my project. Do I want to copy it? Yes, I do. Okay, so now all of a sudden the project is recompiled, so that's fine. But what I don't have in uh, faces config, faces config still only has a reference to one bean address. Okay, I want to be able to use two beans in my whole application, or ten beans, or whatever. So for each one that I want to reference from any artifact in my JSF application, I need to have another uh, reference to a managed bean. Okay, so first what I want to do is go to manage bean. I'll use the tool to do it, or I could write the XML code. And now that the user bean code is actually um, in my project, I should be able to choose add, and sure enough I can, and uh, type user bean, and sure enough it shows up. So the tool allows me to um, insert the XML code without having to memorize the XML code. Now, um, I want to change the handle of that bean. In other words, I want to change the name of that bean. The wizard does default to the name uh, plus the word bean, or it does some derivation of the actual Java file. I want it to be just user, OK? Uh, so I can change it here. Or I can change it in the XML later. I'll just uh, leave it at that. Anything else I want to do, I can fix it in the faces config, but the wizard stubs this out for me. I look in the source, and sure enough, um, manage bean, very simple. I've added another managed bean. Um, so if I look at my new address bean, no properties, right? The user bean code is storing all the data properties. So first name, last name, street, city, zip, okay? In my input form, okay, what I want to do is change the references, and eventually when this form is validated, um, 
this is going to break. We're going to start getting uh, error messages because the first name, last name, city fields are no longer part of address. They're part of user. My uh, method, my business method is still part of the address being Java, but the uh, properties or the data properties for organization purposes are now part of user. Okay, and I just declared my uh, user manage bean in faces config, my user manage bean. And so I'll save that there. That, yep, that makes sense. Um, in my thanks JSP, I have the same problem that the properties now, oops, the properties are uh, in user manage bean. They're not in address manage bean. Okay, save it. And so what I've done here is very simple, added a default property. We saw that work. Uh, we added a default property to um, address being in faces config. This is not, yeah, all of a sudden now I'm getting an error. Wait a second. Manage property city is actually not part of address being. Sorry to do that voice. I did, I did that little voice. It's not actually part. I always anthropomorphize these uh, messages because, you know, you probably out there don't get uh, these messages. But the message is actually saying, it's actually interpreting uh, that you have this managed being called address now, and there's no property called city. So I can actually cut this. I should be able to cut this and add it to instead of um, address, just cut and paste it because it's now really only um, relevant to the user property or the user bean, sorry, the city property for the user bean. So we'll leave those defaults. That's fine. Okay. So we've done a couple of things here. But on our user um, bean, we have first name, last name, street, city, zip. On my input form, I'm only asking the user to type in or enter first name, last name, city, Actually, what I want, the logic in my add new address, I could do testing for whether or not the field of value and set it myself, but I know I'm not prompting for zip. So I want my address bean method, my action or event handler method in the address bean to actually populate the zip field in the user bean instance that's tied to the rest of this form. Okay? That's where my... Um, address being method needs to get um, the current faces context, get the current application, and use the variable resolver to resolve locally something that is named user within this context. So that when I call set zip on this local variable called u, it's going to set the zip value. So we should be able to see in um, the system console, if we want to print it out or whatever, that the user instance actually has a zip value, even though um, we're not prompting for it. So I'm going to make some modifications just so I can experience this and see that it's actually happening. In the thanks JSP, you may remember that we're printing out user first name and we're printing out user last name. Let's add another tag and another expression in the value um, to show us that we're actually getting the zip field. So it was successfully added for zip in the United States, they call it zip or postal code. Let's change it. We'll change it later. Well, it doesn't matter what we're storing it as underneath, right? And I want to add um, another output text. I could copy it, but as soon as I start typing, uh, the code assist comes up to help me out. It should, anyway. Um, output text, yes, it does. See? And the value of output text, and I can uh, highlight it in the outline view, go to the properties view, but I usually have to highlight it again or select it again in the outline view. And the value is, what? Let's copy it. Um, the value is 
from username. Oops, make sure I have the right one when I'm changing the property. Yeah, working with this properties view is not always um, so uh, friendly. And what do I want to do? I want to uh, get zip, right? So that's what I'm doing is adding another label, uh, output text. Um, I could do this as a self-closing tag like the other one and take out the whole closing tag element. That should work. Is it still? Yeah. Oh, it doesn't like, uh, oops. Remember we can concatenate um, in the value. Um, we can just add text into the script attributes itself. Um, just like they've done um, in the original tag, output text, value, first name, last name, um, they went through and put that in. So we're gonna, grab the zip value even though the zip value was set in the address bean and make sure that our bean instances are mapped together. Okay? So we've reorganized our code. We're trying out some new things that we've learned in the JSF expression language. Um, we're working with multiple beans and we know how to resolve those beans in our um, event handler method, in this case, add new address. So let's test to see that all of this is uh, hooked together, okay? So in order to do this, I'm gonna check my server. I'm still working with uh, the HelloJS app. The server's still running from my initial test before I made all these changes. So I wanna go ahead and check to see if I have any publish errors. And I choose to publish, and it's undeploying Hello JSF, redeploying Hello JSF. So I should be able to right click on input form JSP without restarting the server, run as, run on server. City is populated with the default value. Let's watch our server console, okay? Uh, first name, Susan, I'll use my own name. Last name, Smith. City Paris, I love that. I love the, oh, that would be cool. Um, and I press uh, submit. The address for Susan Smith was successfully added for postal code. Exactly what we expected. So the zip is coming from the um, address being logic, even though um, the input is only taking certain fields. So we saw the merging of these instances and we saw the execution of our event handler method. So if I change it to my actual name, if I'm gonna live in Paris, I'm actually gonna put my real name in there. And I see that the uh, code was handled and resubmitted and I have um, everything working as designed. So uh, hopefully that gives you an idea of um, how these beans can work together. We don't necessarily have to have a one-to-one -one relationship, how it is that we resolve these variables, and we got to see it running on JBoss.